Welcome back to Buckeye Barbecue. So I got a request from a subscriber to do a complete review of the Weber Smoke Fire. I happen to have the EX6, so I decided to do that. So we're gonna go through the whole thing today. I'll give you my honest thoughts, good and bad, and uh, let's get started. So as part of this test today, or this uh, review, <clears throat> we're gonna run the Smoke Fire. And I'm gonna set it to the highest temperature. Um, this is one thing I like about the smoke fire is its ability to get to uh, 600 degrees. So uh, you can cook hot and fast. You can sear off a steak at that temperature. So I do like that. Uh, I will say with cooler weather, it struggles to get there sometimes, but it's, that's not really a complaint. It just takes a little longer, but it will heat up and get good and hot, hotter than many pellet cookers will get. So we're gonna go ahead and set that couple of other things to note. I have an ambient probe. The smoke fire has a place for four exter external probes, which is nice to have uh, the, oops, the ability to have that many. So we have one plugged in and I'm going to do that in order to compare the onboard uh, ambient temperature probe that is always there uh, with what another probe reads. Um, we'll see what it says. I do find that they're different a lot, uh, and I find it inconsistently different. Sometimes they're really close, other times they're, they're way off. Uh, worth noting that my smoke fire is fairly clean. I cleaned it out really well the other day, and I think I've used it once for a brief period of time. So it is uh, reasonably clean at this point. Uh, notice that I did add some glued on gasket to the edge. I did that at the beginning of, of when I started using this and when I got it. Um, I don't find that it leaks smoke much. I think the gaskets did help, but I, I think it is reasonably well constructed. Uh, that is not to say there are not weird things about the smoke fire that I don't love, but as far as the materials and the way it's put together, by the way, you can see the smoke already starting, uh, hopefully in the video. Uh, the last thing in the way of introducing is just show you that I am chock full of pellets. These pellets happen to be the Naughty Wood brand, which is kind of my go-to. I really like them, and this is pecan. So 100% hardwood pecan. I have used the uh, Weber brand in the past. They're not super easy to find around here. A lot of times I can get them at Lowe's, but they're kind of the competition blend or something like that. And it's a blend of woods. And I sort of like to try to get a single uh, kind of wood, depending on what I'm smoking. Uh, I've had great luck with these uh, knotty wood uh, pellets though. But this isn't a pellet review. This is a Weber smoke fire review. So we have started it. It is getting up to temperature. So we're gonna close it down and we'll be back with you. Okay, so this has been going about uh, 25 minutes, not quite 25 minutes. I thought I'd do a check-in. Uh, the temperature is showing uh, 600 degrees, and I did just get a notice on the app. And by the way, uh, I will say I do like the app. It's, it's simple, but it gives you what you need. Uh, so the app that Weber provides and the grill does connect through the Wi-Fi and connection has always seemed pretty stable to me. Uh, I haven't had any issues with that. So right now, the grill temp is showing 600 degrees with its own ambient probe. And the probe that I put in is showing anywhere, as you might be able to see it, it's switching back and forth between 590s to 615 or so. I've actually never seen it um, uh, fluctuate like that. It, it's usually pretty stable, so I haven't seen that. It might just have something to do with the fan running and the super high temperature of the cooker. Um, so, so far so good, up to temperature quickly. Glad to see that. Again, when it's really cold out, it's not that quick, but honestly, I have no complaints about that. It has... Uh, uh, generally runs pretty well and gets up to temperature and cold weather is cold weather. It's just kind of the way it works when using these cookers. Um, so while we're here, I'll go through a few things. Uh, first of all, it's got a shelf with a couple of hooks on it uh, on the side where the, uh, the on off switch and the uh, PID controller is. Um, and the hooks that it provides are fine. Nothing special. Uh, maybe if I 
uh, had a wish list that could be granted. A couple more hooks would be neat, but honestly, not that big of a deal. Um, there are shelves for the front and shelves for the side where I have this handle that can be purchased extra and installed. So I think that's a cool thing. I have not done it, uh, but things like that that are made available, uh, that's always a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Uh, casters are nothing special, but not bad. Uh, so they're probably three inch if I had to guess. And uh, two of them on the front are locking. The locks work well. I have the locks engaged right now. So the ash pan is here. I'm going to very quickly, assuming it's not super hot, open this and just show you the inside where the ash is supposed to drop. It generally drops in there, but honestly not my favorite way to do the ash pan. Um, more than that, it's also the grease drip, which is one of the things I do not like about the cooker. Uh, we will show you that. I'm going to turn this off here shortly, and we will uh, open that and look inside it and show you the, the inside of, of the cooker as well. So I'm going to let this cooker run for a bit because there's a few other things I want to show you as part of this review. Uh, so we'll be back with you soon. So I backed the temperature down to 500 degrees uh, just because I wanted to take it all the way up, see how long it took to get there. And then I thought leaving it at 500 for a bit would be fine. Notice the probe that I've added has it about 460 or so, fluctuating a little bit. This is what I often see, and it's not that big of a deal. I think my main issue with it not being uh, um, coordinated, not uh, showing the same temperature, is that it's not real consistent. There are times when it, it, the uh, extra ambient probe will show the identical temperature that the cooker is supposed to be set at and supposedly running, um, and then there are times where it'll be off you know, 10, 20, 30, in this case, 40 degrees. Um, so I would, I would live with it better if it was more consistent. It's just not, uh, it doesn't cause me too many problems, but still, um, you know, part of, part of cooking outdoors like this is really being able to count on your temperature. And, and I don't necessarily feel like I can do that. I always feel like I have to have a belt and suspenders with the smoke fire. And while we're back here for a moment, I'll point out some, oops. A feature in the back that I do like. So this lever right here, if I were to pull it, would start dropping pellets out of the hopper into whatever you put under, under the chute. Uh, I do like a way to remove pellets for cleaning or, or changing flavors. Uh, some uh, cookers don't have them. Most do, but there's a particular brand that I'm not going to mention because it doesn't matter. But one of the things I don't love about theirs is typically they do not have a pellet chute. Um, the pellet hopper, I am going to open this later, but I'm actually waiting for a little bit. But the pellet hopper for the smoke fire, if you can see it, it's sort of long and slender and in the back of the unit. Uh, I don't love this. I don't love it at all. It is inconvenient to put pellets in. Uh, I feel like I spill pellets most times when I try to put them in, or I have to put them in so slowly with such a small container, it takes too long to do. Um, you, even with a bag, you can cut an opening in the end. You got to pour them slowly, or uh, they'll start flying out around your cooker, which I hate. Um, the exhaust also exits two thirds of it right above the pellet hopper. So you can see the uh, creosote that builds up and there's no cleaning that off. You can get some stuff and kind of get it, but it just comes back quickly. Um, I don't love the design of the pellet, pellet hopper on the Weber at all. And by the way, this is the EX6. I believe that is 600 square inches of cooking service. I actually wouldn't swear to that. And then there is an EX400, which is not as wide. I believe they're both the same depth, which I think is around 20 inches, uh, but we can uh, look at that sometime too. It's got two shelf levels, which I do like. So it's got the shelf on top that is easily removable. And then the grates on the bottom, which are actually three separate grates. 
uh, which are well built. Uh, you can uh, take them out easily, uh, clean them outside of the cooker if you want to. And certainly everything in here can be replaced. I haven't replaced anything yet, but they use the flavorizer bars, which I actually have stacked on either end. I think I just didn't uh, put them back properly when I uh, cleaned it the last time. But it's the same type of setup as Weber gas grills. Uh, notice the fire pot in the middle with the uh, heat deflector above that. If you notice right under those flames, each side has that little cutout that drops down into the ash pan that I showed you earlier. That is a grease drain. You can see that trench cut out there, uh, and that is supposedly for grease to fall into and then run out into the grease pan. My problem with this design is I don't feel like the grease drains in there very well because on almost any cook, you get ash there that stops the grease from draining properly so it just ends up caking in that uh, valley. Um, I haven't had real trouble with grease fires but I've also been careful. I saw a lot of people had trouble with grease fires so if I have a really greasy cook a lot of times I'll use a drip pan or whatever. So grease fires haven't been a major issue for me uh, but uh, I'm also being careful. I can see where they could be a problem. I just do not love this grease drain design that the smoke fire has. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more um, in the next segment about some of the issues I had to begin with with the smoke fire and uh, how Weber dealt with them and, and some more thoughts. So thanks for tuning in. Okay, so we're going to get the uh, smoke fire shut down now. <clears throat> a couple of things to show you beforehand. First of all, it does have what Weber calls a smoke boost feature, where if you turn it on, it will hold the uh, temperature between 165 and 200 in my experience, depending on variables like ambient temperature outside, etc. cetera. Uh, so you can run really low and smoke, slow, and uh, smoke is uh, produced uh, a lot more than normal. Uh, so I've used that before for different things, uh, starting out low and slow cooks or, or whatever, just to get more smoke on, on my target meat. Uh, I think it works okay. I, I don't really know, honestly, uh, uh, how great it is, but uh, I have used it. Um, and then, so for shutting down, we're just going to hold the button in and in, then uh, select shut down. And like all pellet grills that I'm familiar with, it'll run down to a shutdown sequence where it uses the fan to burn the uh, pellets that are already in the hopper and it resets the auger to get ready for the next cook. Uh, for this particular uh, uh, cooker, the smoke fire, it's about a 15 minute process, something like that. Um, and it works fine. I don't have any complaints and I've every pellet cooker I've been around uh, has a similar uh, shutdown procedure. Uh, the one thing I did want to show you uh, as part of this video and the reason I ran the smoke fire for a while is to show you the cavitation issue that uh, I, I have with this uh, cooker. Um, essentially, it will just start to drop pellets right above the uh, chute for the auger and it will go all the way down and you just hopefully saw it on the video it drop a little further but eventually it will just run out of pellets even though there's plenty of pellets in there um, and I've seen it where the uh, the sides of the pellets just have a wall going down to the auger chute and uh, the auger ends up running without pellets um, I have noticed this in other cookers it is much more pronounced and much more of a problem in this cooker I have seen posts on, on social media that people don't have this problem. Uh, if that's the case, uh, more power to you because I, I always have this problem. I have just gotten in the habit of shuffling the pellets around now and again. Um, and it hasn't been a huge problem. But if I was doing a really long overnight cook, I definitely uh, uh, come out and 
shuffle the pellets uh, in the middle of the night just to make sure so I don't run out of pellets. Uh, there is a new insert for the pellet chute or the pellet hopper, I should say, that Weber provided me, and it's part of their upgrade package when they started having problems, along with a, a new auger, uh, new material auger. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about my full experience after the grill shuts down and cools off a little bit. But I uh, have this cavity, and there it goes again, and you can just kind of see how it would happen. Uh, but it will, quote unquote, run out of pellets because uh, of the cavitation eventually if I didn't mess with it. Uh, there is a finger guard down there that I actually do not have because when I first got this uh, cooker, um, somebody posted a video of how they removed that. It's nothing but a couple of wires doing a crisscross. I trusted myself not to put my fingers down in the auger mechanism. So I took it out hoping that uh, it might correct any cavitation, potential cavitation problem, but it doesn't seem to make a difference at all. Um, so we'll let this uh, cooker uh, totally shut down and cool off, and then we'll do a final video, give you my final thoughts. So we'll be back. Okay, so we're going to make this the last segment of the, of the video. The uh, smoke fire has been off now for maybe 15, 20 minutes, something like that. It's probably still a little hot inside. I'm going to remove the extra probe thermometer that I put in there for temperature monitoring. I'm going to go ahead and take out the uh, top shelf as well and just set it aside. Again, I do like the top top shelf. Most cookers have that, especially of this size, but it's easy to remove. So if you're doing a tall brisket or something and don't need it, or uh, if you are doing a few pork butts and do want uh, the extra space, uh, you can have it. Again, the uh, smoke fire uses the flavorizer bars that most Weber grills use. I have them stacked on the side. Uh, just because I didn't put them back the proper way after I cleaned the last time. Again, you can kind of see what I was talking about down there by that grease drain. The ash piles up in there, and I'm never convinced that the actual grease drains down there very well. Um, so when I clean it, uh, it actually comes with a plastic spatula that works reasonably well. Nothing special, but it works. Uh, and you can just scrape the sides down, and then I end up kind of scraping everything down into that... Uh, hole by the way that's right there if you can't see it very well uh, and I just scrape everything down to that hole on either side and then uh, uh, empty out the uh, the drawer that I showed you earlier so I'm going to take off the uh, heat shield here try not to burn myself I think it's too hot but and then uh, got one more thing to remove so there's the fire pot, and notice the caking ash at the bottom. I think that's a little bit of a problem. We'll try to zoom in a little bit. I have seen that in other pellet cookers. I don't think Weber's is set up that well to avoid that. So the, uh, the igniter is under there, and I see this ash caking issue after every cook. It really doesn't matter how long the cook was. It's just a matter of, of how big that... Uh, that cake of ash is again don't think it's exclusive to weber but i do think it's worse than the weber cookers so you always have to get in there and clean that out i usually just vacuum it out after everything cools off pretty well uh, but it's kind of a pain to get to with all of the components that you have to move around uh, once again I don't know that it's a lot different than other pellet cookers, but the grease drain is definitely different. Uh, I definitely do not like it in this cooker. Um, and then the cavitation issue in the back. So when I first got uh, the cooker, the issues I was having uh, were on long cooks, and, and it didn't even take that long to, to be a problem. You know, maybe two or three hours in, I suddenly would lose all my heat and I would take all of the components out just like it is now and I would see a huge pile of, of pellets just filled in the fire pot. 
because uh, I assume you know this about pellet cookers, but the igniter only works once until the fire's going, and then it's just all about the rate of pellet feeding. And for whatever reason, the pellets would snuff the flame out, and you know you'd be two or three hours into a pork butt, and your cooker is lost all its its temperature, the fire is gone, and you've got a mess of pellets. So I contacted Weber about this, and they sent a few different things. They sent an auger uh, reassembly kit. I believe it's made out of a different material. I can't remember the details. They also sent a new chute insert for the pellets in the back of the, uh, in the pellet hopper. And I didn't initially do these things myself. I think I did the shoot myself and I just didn't have the time to get to it. And I complained to Weber and, and to their credit, they actually sent a company out to pick up my smoke fire. And by the way, this is after two or three times of having problems. Uh, I was, I was contacting them often and they sent a company out and took the smoke fire away and redid everything. And I'll I'll say that uh, it has been a lot better since then, um, and that's probably been about a year. It's been a lot better. I've only had a couple times where the cooker totally shut down and and lost its fire. Um, so I am happy about that. I'm pleased the way Weber stood behind the product and took care of it. Um, I think my my issue is that I still hate the the grease drain and the way the ash and and the grease are set up to exit the cooker and I hate the pellet hopper and nothing is ever going to change that. They're not going to come replace and put a better pellet hopper location, shape, and system on this cooker. Uh, overall, I'll be 100% honest and say if I had it to do over again, I would not have bought this cooker. There are too many other good ones out there around the same price point. Um, I've got a very, very cheap rec tech at our other uh, place and it uh i've never had an issue with it it's a different kind of cooker uh, you, you got to get used to it in its own ways but but from a functional standpoint it functions I, i've never had an issue it's worked perfectly um and then just for a little bit more money you can get so much better of a cooker um than this one I, I'm a big believer in Weber. I have had one of their kettles for years and years. The thing holds up. And from a construction standpoint, this isn't bad. But I just think it's a poor design, and there are just better options out there for pellet cookers. Um, so I'm still using this. Many of the videos I've created were done on this. It cooks well and typically works uh, after Weber took care of uh, the issues I was having. But uh, it's just not the pellet cooker that I would buy again. Um, so if you love yours and maybe the pellet hopper is uh, great for you just because of its low profile or something, uh, great. Tell me in the comments. Uh, these types of cookers are really a personal thing. I don't expect my opinion and my thoughts on it to be everybody's. Uh, but those are my honest opinions. And... I'm going to do another video on this cooker this weekend and cook something, and I'm sure it'll turn out great. So it's not uh, it's not the worst thing in the world by any stretch, uh, but I wouldn't buy it again. So thanks for tuning in. I know this video kind of turned out a little longer than I meant it to, um, but I hope it uh, helps you if you're out there navigating the world of pellet cookers and what you should buy. Um, if you have any specific questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, and I will certainly try to answer any that come up. And thanks again for tuning in to Buckeye Barbecue. And if you, if you would like this video and subscribe to the channel, it would be appreciated. Thanks a lot.